Hi everybody, it's Andrew. I'm having a bit of fun with the camera today. Um, because I've lost my normal vlogging camera. Is it downstairs somewhere, I think? Can't find it, can I? So I'm filming a haul on my SLR that I usually use for colouring chats and such like. So I have got a haul on one subject for you. This is a haul of Jack the Ripper books. So yes, there are 13 books here in total. 13 bought from either Amazon or eBay new or used. So I'm going to start with the one I've got already, it's one duplicate, and that is this one. This is Jack the Ripper The Final Solution by Stephen Knight. So this is the book, the main book, that started the whole royal conspiracy. It had been floating around from somebody else for a little while and Stephen Knight took it and run with it. So he's the guy who said that um, the, I think it's the Duke of Clarence, is it? Oh dear, my books are falling everywhere. Um, let me have a look. Oh, I don't know. Let's have a look. Anyway, it said that he, this, this, uh, I think the Duke of Clarence, um, oh, for God's sake, uh, met a woman in the East End called Annie Elizabeth Crook and fell in love with her and married her. Now, not only was she a commoner, but she was also a Roman Catholic, which of course, our current royal family cannot marry Roman Catholics. I mean, I'm sure it would be different now if necessary, but back then, definitely not. So, but not only did they get married, they had a child together, a girl named Alice. And the nanny of this Alice was a lady named Mary Jane Kelly, who decided, along with her friends, Catherine Eddowes, Polly Nichols, etc., et all, to blackmail the royal family with this information. And so uh, a team of around two to three people uh, starting, started killing them and that included uh, Sir William Withy Gull, which was the Queen's, one of the Queen's physicians, um, John Netley, who was a carriage man and a coachman, and of course uh, Walter Sickart. This is the guy that Cromwell, uh, Patricia Cromwell, uh, blames for the murders and she's written two books on the subject and a documentary as well um, came from. So they started, started killing them. Now, if you think this sounds suspiciously like the film From Hell, it is because the comic book From Hell was generated on the back of this book and of course the movie with Johnny Depp and Heather Graham was built on the back of the comic book From Hell. It's complete fiction. I enjoy the movie. I love the movie. I love Heather Graham. I love Johnny Depp and I think the filming is really really well done but it's still fiction. There's no evidence I guess is what I want to say to, to go with the fact that uh, they were involved in the death. It's very unlikely. We know where that the prince was. We know where Walter Sickart was and well, John Netley, he was a coachman. And what you've got to remember is these people were real. These aren't fictional characters and this is what gets to me is they're blaming real people who have real descendants. John Net Net Netley has a descendant who is active on one of the Ripper groups on, on Facebook. And he actually has commented before that he uh, has been looking into it. Um, however, I do have this book, so I don't need another copy. So stay tuned, and at the end of the video, I will give you a chance to get this copy, and I'll tell you what you need to do. There's not a lot, believe me. So if you stick to the end of it, you will find out how to you can get this copy of The Final Solution uh, by Stephen Knight. It is a well written book, it is very easy to read, and I think that's probably why this idea took off because it was very enjoyable read, very well written. So don't knock it out of the park for that. Um, it's still an interesting read, but if you want a copy of this, stay tuned to the end and I'll tell you where to get it, how to get it, wherever you are in the world, because I will post this internationally, because I'm that kind of nice person. Now, the next one has fallen on the floor. In fact, two of them have fallen on the floor, but the next one. Now, this next one is The Crimes and Times of Jack the Ripper by Tom Cullen. I believe in America it's known as When London Walked in Terror. This is the uh, British paperback. This is one that Steve Donoghue over at Steve Donoghue recommends to read. Um, he's a bit of a ripperologist himself, so yeah, I haven't read this yet, but I am looking forward to it. So the back of the book says, the best book that has been written about murder, the murder, fascinating complex of the macabre and the incompetent, the grisly, the comic and pathological, that was Evening Standard. 
Uh, Daily Express said neither a foreigner, as, pop as was popularly believed at the time, nor one of those wax moustache villains straight out of a melodrama. He was, thinks Mr Cullen, an innocuous looking barrister of 31, an intriguing theory, and by no means as preposterous as it sounds. So by that it sounds like he's going with the suspect being um, Montague John Druitt. But I don't know because I haven't read it yet, but it's on my, obviously, books to read list. The next one I got is a heavy, heavy book. It's massive. I remember when this came out, it came out around the time I started making videos for booktube. Obviously I only make them hit and miss now because of Colour of Tube, which is my main thing, and obviously Jennifer. Uh, and this is Otto Penzler's Jack the Ripper, the ultimate compendium of the legacy and legend of history's most notorious killer, fact, fiction, and legend. It's, as you can see, it's a huge tome it's with the notes and the um but it's, it's about 992 pages long it's huge it's going to be what i dip into every now and again i'm not going to read it this is an extra library copy and considering it's an extra library copy it's actually quite good condition <clears throat> so for instance there's an uh, introduction you've got the true story so this is the bits of facts so victims in the night the murders key texts uh, witness statements autopsy reports the letters so various different, uh, Peter Underwood, who was Jack the Ripper, you'll see Peter Underwood again in a minute. Mystery Solved, um, Jack B. Lamble, Jack B. Quit by Stephen Hunter, Copy Murders Another by Robin O'Dell. And then you've got Mystery Crime Suspense Stories. So these are short stories about the Jack the Ripper murder. Uh, Red Jack, An Inspiration, so I don't know, and Saucy Jack, Timeless. So they're various uh, short stories and fictions. Um, it includes in here the original story of The Lodger, the short story, by Marie Belloc Lowndes. Uh, this was uh, Hitchcock's first movie was based on this story, or one of his first movies. And then you've got the novel version, which is the expanded version of the same story. So I wanted this when it came out. It's, I don't know if the price is on here. I don't know, but I think it was around 30 quid. I got it for a tenner on eBay, about that. Like I said, it is an ex-library copy from Liverpool. Liverpool Libraries. I got it from World Books. I buy a lot from them. They're usually really good. It has got the plastic on it. It's still got its um, bookmark. Published by Head of Zeus. It's still in print. You can still get it. I thought that one. And then I've got Jack the Ripper and Anatomy of a Myth by William Beadle. There are two William Beadle. And this one says, A woman killer who renders the midnight streets dreadful with the footfalls of death. In the autumn of 1888, London was convulsed by a series of gruesome murders. So I haven't got my glasses on. The unknown killer was given the nickname Jack the Ripper. Since that bloodstained autumn, a series of fantastic myths have been spun about the Ripper, whilst truth has walked off into the mists. Now the time has come to dispel these myths and see who and what the Ripper really was. Together, let us solve the conundrum. Who was Jack the Ripper? I'm pretty sure it doesn't solve that conundrum, otherwise we wouldn't be talking about him now. And this one came out in 1995 originally. It's just that one. Some of these do have photos in. I'm not going to show any of the photo pages in case I showed the horrific Kelly one. Um, do I have another Beadle one? No, I think it's Melvin Harris. I've got two of two Melvin Harris's. Let's go back to Peter Underwood. This is Jack Ripper's 100 Years of Mystery. And this one says, uh, I've read this one actually. It's a very, it's a quick read. It's very well written, but I'll talk more about that in my wrap up. Jack the Ripper still calls it a shudder, synonymous as it is with violent murder and mutilation, but also with mystery and speculation for the gruesome series of killings in London's East End in that horrific autumn of 1888 have finally been solved. Hmm, have they? That was a very Steve Donahoe moment. <laughs> I love Steve Donahue, can you tell? Uh, that's what, the identity of the Ripper has motives. His motives and his associates have been the subject of endless discussion and spe speculation since Victorian times. Suspects have been as varied as a Jewish slaughterman and the Duke of Clarence. Now as the centenary of those terrible crimes is about to be commemorated comes Peter Underwood's comprehensive book. Look comprehensive look at all aspects of Jack the Ripper. It contains a wealth of new and previously unpublished material with a detailed look at the possible candidates and probable identity. So not definite, but probable identity. Examinations of the murder sites then and now. Well, not now because obviously this is a lot older. If it's the centenary, it's around 88. Then another, psychics of the psyche of the murdered 
murderer and the murdered, the alleged ghosts and spirit contacts and a survey of all the writings on the Ripper and his victims published and unpublished. This is the definitive book with a hundred year perspective. Peter Underwood is the author of This Haunted Isle. I have that book actually. It's on the shelf behind me. I don't know if you can see it. It's this one I'm pointing at there. And if you want me to talk about that I will. So this one was published originally in I've published quite a lot of books. Most of his books are about ghosts. Sorry, I'm short-sighted and I'm long-sighted. So, yeah. 1987, yeah, so just before Brush and Teenery, which was 18, 1988, obviously. So there's that one. I've got Jack the Ripper, Quest for a Killer by MJ Tro. Interestingly enough, a friend of mine, Hannah, uh, MJ Tro, Tro was one of her teachers at school. There you go. You learn something every day. So in this book he identifies a previously unknown prime suspect, proves the Ripper killed seven women and not five, outlines a new motive for the killings, uses behavioural psycho psychology, modern forensic techniques and murder mapping, destroys fanciful, fanciful conspiracy theories and is written as a historical whodunit. So this will be quite good I think. So yeah this one came out, so this is something these are quite old. Uh, which is quite nice, 2009, so it's not that old, so there's that one. I've got Jack the Ripper, the final chapter. This is by Paul H. Felsman. So I just dropped one on the floor. Yeah. Includes sensual revelation from the Ripper's living descendants. Now, I believe this is... Um, a book about the Ripper Diary, which is Maybrick, I believe. Yes. So, since October 1993, we do have the, the diary up on the Jack the Ripper shelf. Uh, the Diary of Jack the Ripper, written by James Maybrick, has been believed by many to be a hoax, yet incredibly not one person has been able or attempted to explain how it was forged or by whom. Why not? Because it's genuine. Is it? Is it really? Sorry, Steve. I'm not taking the mickey. I just think you're fantastic. Remarkable as it may seem, here is the proof that the journal which came to light in 1991 was written by James Moonybrick for the notorious, the notorious Whitechapel murder. The book reveals how the largest and most detailed investigation ever undertaken on the subject led the author through the smokescreen of an official couple cover-up via the Royals and the Masons. Again, really? To the true provenance of the diary, Jack the Ripper's watch and ultimately his true identity, as well as providing the long-awaited solution to one of the most enduring mysteries in the history of crime. This is always the story of the... Uh, blah, 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 blah. This is also the story of the man at his centre, James Maybrick, how he died and how his wife was falsely imprisoned for his murder. Now that part of the story really does interest me. So I'm looking forward to that bit of it. This same fascinating story draws in two people still alive today. One descended from an illegitimate child of James Maybrick and the other from his wife Florence who, until now, despite potential financial reward, have battled to conceal the truth and protect their families. Jack the Ripper, the final chapter, presents crucial new evidence from the Home Office files, hard facts, and for first time, the undeniable truth. But, you know, all the books say that. All the books say that, and every single one can convince you that it's the truth. <clears throat> Got to, this one I bought just for the, I just love the title, Jack the Ripper, A Psychic Investigation. The Compelling Panora Paranormal Search for the Killer's True Identity by Pamela Ball. So as you can tell, this one's not highly regarded in Ripper Circles. And I'll tell you what it says on the back. Jack the Ripper, A Psychic Investigation, investigates the story of the author's journey into the heart of a mystery that has haunted popular imagination for over 100 years. The grisly details both fascinate and repel, and the apparent lack of understandable motive makes the story always also even more bewildering. I need to get a new set of teeth. Pamela Ball uses both astrology and channeling to cast new and startling light on a puzzle that has baffled the experts ever since the gruesome murders were committed in Whitechapel back in 1888. Using these psychic tools... Oh dear, it's horrible out there. Where's it gone? Combined with a detailed study of the political and social background of the time, she is able to shatter many of the myths and preconceptions that have built up around Jack the Ripper and points to conclusions that take us closer than we've ever been to solving the riddle of who did commit the atrocious killings. 
The methods employed are unusual and radical and perhaps too incredible for some. Jack the Ripper, a psychic investigation, simply presents the shocking evidence and needs the reader to decide. So in other words, they don't come to a conclusion not in viewers. Which is unusual because most books do try to. Right, two by Melvin Harris, The Ripper File. I love the cover on this one with its uh, Victorian drawing of the police being bamboozled and Jack the Ripper being a ghoul, which okay, he might well have been, you know, it was a weird thing. So The Ripper Fiber Maven Harris, this one came out in 1989, so just after the same teenery. So what was it like to walk the streets of Whitechapel in 1888 and wonder whether around the corner, under the next arch, you might meet the terrifying man known as Jack the Ripper, or find the ghastly aftermath of one of his crimes? As 1888 wore on, the fears, the rumours, the myths about the killer grew and grew. Soon, not just London, but the whole of Britain was caught up by the case and, by, and the story spread further until the echo of Jack's crimes reverberated around the world. Using archive material, most of it unpublished since it first appeared at the time of the killings, Melvin Harris reconstructs the horror of those days uh, with rare immediacy, telling the story of the murders and the suspects as they came to light. He shows how the police, already demoralised by scandal in their ranks, conducted their investigations in confused disarray, compounding their mistakes with faulty reasoning, reasoning that day by day hampered the hunt for the real killer and heightened the public fears. There seemed to be no limit to Jack's ability to fool the forces ranged against him and to get away with crime after crime. In the end, the clashes between Police Commissioner Sir Charles Warren and the Home Secretary Charles Matthews came to a head and Warren lost his job. But Warren's successor at Monroe achieved no better result. The press, headed by powerful editors like W.T. Steed or Stead and T.P. O'Connor, constantly fueled speculation on the murderer's identity and stirred up public blame for the official contact. Melvin Harris, unrivaled today at detecting, and contra at detecting contradictory theories and misleading evidence, exposed popular myths about the supposed identity of Jack the Ripper and using today's techniques of investigation, worked out his own answer to the case, offering conclusive evidence that should finally stamp Jack the Ripper file solved. Um, I'm pretty sure it doesn't. But still, I'm looking forward to reading this one. Then... I have got, I've got, there's another one there that I've missed, I haven't done yet, Jack the Ripper, The Bloody Truth, again by Melvin Harris. I don't know if this is a reprint of the original or not. I, I think I did check and it seems to be slightly different, so I will read them both. This one came out in, oh, this one came out in 87. So this one's two years before that one, so this is an earlier one. So let's have a quick look at what this one says. It is indisputable that Jack the Ripper has provoked more interest than any other, other murderer in history. His crimes engendered unparalleled horror in the public mind, yet they inspired short stories, novels, stage plays, films and even operas. But as the bloody truth shows, no other unsolved mystery has so many befuddled and corrupted many of its investiga many investigators. Yeah. Right, okay, revealing in the bloody truth for the first time the secrets behind a series of hoaxes stretching back to 1895 and using many contemporary illustrations never before published, Melvin Harris at last demolishes trenchantly and scathingly the elaborate conspiracy theory advanced in Stephen Knight's The Final Solution. So that should be interesting. The involvement of the royal family, the Freemasons, Sir William Gull and Walter Sickert is shown to be nothing but the wildest fiction. There we go. So that's going to be quite an interesting one. It, it uh, demolishes the final solution. So, right, next I have, this is supposed to be a really good one. The Man Who Hunted Jack the Ripper, Edmund Reed and the Police Perspective by Nicholas Connell and Stuart P. Evans. Introduction by Richard Whitt 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 Whittington Egan. Uh, two names I really recognise there. Uh, Stuart Evans and Richard Whittington Egan. So I'm sorry, Nicholas, I don't know your name, but yes. So... I'm just going to read the blurb on the back, which is actually by other authors. A fascinating and informative account, not just of a Victorian detective's investigations, but also a well-rounded portrait of a man whom it truly can be said was at the cutting edge of the Jack the Ripper investigations, will be greedily mined for its nuggets of information. And that's from Donald Rumblow, author of The Complete Jack the Ripper. That's an absolutely excellent book as well. And then 
Thankfully, this is not another dog's breakfast of partisan fact and fiction about the Ripper. Instead, Nick Connell and Stuart Evans give us an honest, accurate and realistic account of Inspector Reed and the Whitechapel murders, which contain, besides refreshing finds of new information, no genuine student on the case will want to miss. Highly recommended. And that is by Philip Sugden, author of The Complete History of Jack the Ripper. And the next one is the Ultimate Jack the Ripper Sourcebook, an illustrated encyclopedia by Stuart P. Evans and Keith Skinner. So this is Stuart Evans again. All the Scotland Yard reports, witness statements, lost files, extensive press accounts, rare photographs, which I've probably seen. So the back tells us that full contents of the Scotland Yard files covering the series of murders considered by the police in their Ripper investigations, plus copies of documents now missing from the files. The pathologist's report, witness statements and official police reports. Material from the Royal Archives, major London record offices and home office files, never seen before. Many contemporary newspaper reports and over 100 photographs and illustrations, many rare and never published before. Now this was actually published in, do I have a date somewhere? Must be a date, excuse me. And it'd be here somewhere in uh, the year 2000 so of course it's 21 years old now so it probably could use a bit of an update i do like the dedication for don rumbelow so that's nice um and it gives you a timeline and there's yeah there's lots of photos in here and oh wow now this one i can show you this is a photograph of the original jack the ripper files as stored at new scotland yard prior to being sent to the records office in queue and it's this top one here i think that's fast that's quite fascinating that's how they stored them before they were moved to the queue so that that one i can show you there's nothing nasty there <laughs> i just don't want to upset anybody because i know that some of the ripper photographs can be they, they are very horrific and the final one is a fairly new one i think came out this year it's the newest one on the list and it is The Ripper Reports by Tim Thorne, Jack the Ripper and the Whitechapel Murders, as reported by the Victorian Press. So on the back we've got, the year is 1888 and one of the world's most notorious serial killers is about to throw Victorian London into turmoil. Using press reports from the time, The Ripper Reports reveals the crimes of Jack the Ripper and the Whitechapel Murders as events unfolded. Great. If you already know the Ripper crimes, this book reveals the fallacies, misinformation and conspiracies initially reported as events unfolded. If you are new to Jack the Ripper, you can experience the roller coaster of news revelations as the horrified Victorian public would have done at the time. So it tells it um, in time order, and I can't think of the word, chronologically as they were published. So this is going to be absolutely fascinating. Again, one you can dip in and read a few reports and then stop because they're going to be quite gruesome because you know Jack the Ripper so that I've just got to find the other book now is, not, there it is. is my Jack the Ripper haul <laughs> as you know I do love reading about the Ripper I'm very interested in the victims more than the, the, the murderer um, but I think we need to read about the murders and the times to know about the victims because they were completely different times than today it's a totally different set of circumstances they, they lived in Murders still happen, but obviously there's more chance of killing them. Now, if you want to, we can have a, a discussion on Jack the Ripper at another time on this channel. But I'm going to give away a copy of The Final Solution. So basically, there's no big caveat on this. All I want you to do is to leave a comment down below that includes the phrase, Jack's back. That's it. So you can say, I really enjoyed this haul. I fancy checking out such and such a book, Jack's back and I will put you into a draw. Now this will run for the whole of May, so I'm putting this out today is May the 3rd, so it will end on May 31st, and then if, if I've got any comments at all, <laughs> if I've only got one, you get it, you know. Um, I will then happily uh, post this to you, I'll contact you, or get you to contact me at my email address, it's, it's on some of the earlier videos, it's not on there at the moment, but it doesn't matter, I'll, I'll give you my email address anyway, so. And I will happily post this to you. It's in really good condition. It's it's uh, published by who is this one published by? Book Club Associates. This edition was published back in. Oh, I don't know. It doesn't say. 
but the book itself was first published in 1976 and while I can honestly say I know that it's been uh, you know demolished by another book this book is an enjoyable read. It's interesting to read where the stories that From Hell was based on came from and where he got his information. Sadly, Stephen Knight died fairly young. I believe he had some sort of cancer or tumour. I'm not sure. But he did die very young. Um, and I think he'd probably be amazed to see his book is still talked about and read and people still enjoy it. And it is a good read. I'm not saying it's not a bad read. I'm just saying if you want to know uh, more about the, the royal conspiracy and how it came about this is the is the book to read um, because it is a part of the law now uh, the, the the law and history of um jack the ripper so yeah so just leave me a comment down below saying something and jack's back and this could be yours could be winging its way to you wherever you are in the world like i said i will post this internationally if you're in australia i will post it to you if you're in the states i will post it to you if you're in germany i will post it to you if, you know even though i deal with stupid customs forms I'll do it because I want to share the love I mean I've got this book I don't need another copy so I'll see you in the next video I hope you've enjoyed this if you want to, uh, me to do a video on Jack the Ripper uh, I can if you want me to show you all my Jack the Ripper books I certainly can because it's growing that one's a curl the floor sorry I, it is growing all the time because I do tend to pick these up as and when I can on eBay or oh dear Jennifer's having a cry but go and see if she's alright or Amazon I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys.